Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about an ethics complaint. Who do you think filed an ethics complaint against me? Drawing up all kinds of false allegations and wasting the state's time. So today I'm going to talk to you about ethics complaints. I had two different ethics complaints filed on me when I was mayor. And who do you think is the one who did that? John Cook. Why do you think John did it? Well, I can tell you why I think John did it. I think part of it was Russell getting him to do this to try to get me out of his way. And the other reason is because John was trying to pay me back because Michelle didn't get on the board or Lynette, whatever her name is. So those are the reasons I think he did this, making these false allegations, wasting the state's time to investigate this matter, and we'll see what happened. So first, we're going to start with this. In August, I had gotten a letter, as you can see right here, I got this letter from the State of Florida Commission of Ethics. And it, this one is dated August, and it's telling me that the above caption complaint was recently received in their office, the Commission on Ethics, and they will forward all future correspondence in this matter to me at the above listed address, and that this is just a routine administrative requirement. So right now they're just telling me, hey, somebody filed this complaint against you. We have to look into it. We wanted to let you know that it's there. We haven't given it any merit yet. This is just the formality. And it goes to myself and to the complainant. And then it is going to be brought in front of the commission to decide whether they want to go further with it. It all remains confidential until something or unless one of the parties decides they want to talk about it. There's nothing that the commission can do about that. So now we're well past when this was filed, so we're going to start talking about it. I also want to let you know that I have screenshots that I will be sharing with you in the future of things that John Cook was posting about myself and my husband with his false allegations um, slandering us after all the nice things we did for them. So there's been a lot going on behind the scenes and Jeremy and George were not the only ones who have been targeted from John and Lynette dealing with their havoc. So it's just a shame that lots of people have to go through this and nobody seems to care about certain people. And that's the people who have been hurt by this. Myself, Brett, George, and Jeremy, the people in the county are not looking out for us. So anyway, as we go on to read, they're going to go through this and let me know their findings. When these things start, I can tell you, obviously, it's a timely, it's not in a timely manner, by any means. It takes quite a while and if you had to put dollar amounts into how much this costs the state, I couldn't tell you what those amounts are, but I think it's absolutely ridiculous for people to make false allegations and money to get wasted because if they do find any merits in it, they send down investigators from Tallahassee. So now you're taking somebody has to come down to wherever in the state of Florida from Tallahassee. They probably have to pay hotel fees, gas, per diem, all those type of things. So it can get quite costly for false allegations. It's shameful. So anyway, they basically state in this letter that this is just a preliminary investigation and they will be letting me know in the future what is to come of this. So here we can see this is the complaint. This complaint was filed by John Cook, and it is filed against Teresa Granger. 
I didn't even know my name was Teresa. So apparently there's a few people out there who can't even get my name right. Nor did he even have my phone number in here right. So they just filing complaints against whoever Teresa is. I don't know. There's a, another person who likes to call me Teresa as well. She don't know what she's talking about either on all these other groups and pages that she gives out all her legal advice of everything. I'm sure you all know her as Hughes. She don't know what she's talking about. So now we'll go into the complaint. And there is four pages in the complaint, nine different items. And I'll read to you as best I can to what he is saying in his complaint. Mind you, the grammar's not very well. It's hard to make out some of the different things he's saying, but I'll read it to you as wrote. There are a lot of run-on sentences, as you can imagine. It's pretty interesting. So number one in his complaint is Otter Creek's mayor, Teresa Granger, was voted into office. The very next day, knowing that Jeremy Hill said he was going to sue the town of Otter Creek, mind you, that lawsuit was already happening. So it wasn't just a warning that he was going to sue Otter Creek. He already had them in a lawsuit. So then it says she invited him into the office to go through our private files. Knowing he was about ready to file a lawsuit against the town of Otter Creek. Again, that lawsuit was already in play. And I will be breaking down to you what my responses to each of these are to the commission. So I won't interject too much on all of that right now, but I will be reading those to you in a back and forth so that you'll know. And then he says, which as a commissioner should be defending as they are best friends. Sorry, it's a little hard to decipher this writing. So he is saying that I have invited Jeremy Hales into the Otter Creek office to review the private files and that me and Jeremy are best friends and that I'm not defending Otter Creek. So first thing I want to tell you about that is that there are no private files. The things that are in the town hall are public record. And I believe that title, public record, gives you a clue about who they're open to. You, the public, everybody. So there's very little information that is private. And if so, that would just be redacted. Is that the word? Redacted? Um, and then it would be handed to you in the public record. Number two, about a week later, she had her very first meeting as our mayor, A-R-E, mayor. Okay. <clears throat> she informed the town of Otter Creek had been served a lawsuit by Jeremy Hales. Now, again, this lawsuit was already in play, but the former mayor didn't tell anybody anything was going on. Matter of fact, he was very quiet in things happening all the time and didn't inform people of what was going on in the town. So that's why it was brought to the attention of the town because we had to hire a litigating attorney because Mr. Warm, the town attorney, was not handling this. And matter of fact, if Mr. Warm had done his job and given the public record to Jeremy, or Mary, actually, if Mary had given the public records to Jeremy when asked, there never would have been a lawsuit. So it could have been avoided by several people. First off, Mary, by doing her job as the town clerk. Secondly, 
Mr. Warm, when he got invited into the situation, he could have given the town records or had Mary produce the town public records to give to Jeremy, avoiding the lawsuit. Now it has just gone to the wayside and we're going even further and Russell's not talking about it with anybody. So that's why it was brought to light by me in a meeting to let the town know what was going on and where the town had failed its people because now it's costing the town a bunch of money that was unnecessary. So that needed to be spoken about. As I said, I would be transparent and I was. So um, she informed the town of Otter Creek been served the lawsuit by Jeremy Hales and had to hire a law firm to defend the town. So they voted on a law firm. So a law firm was voted on later in the meeting herself and vice mayor Sims, I'm guessing he means Zim, came up with a idea to invite Al, Al, the residents, I'm assuming he means all the residents, to look through all of our personal files and she said yes to it. This is very unethical and nobody should go through or though, nobody should go though, our personal files or other files. Teresa said they would do it the next day at 9 a.m. Jeremy Hales asked if he could look through the files knowing there is a lawsuit and she said yes. So again, there's no personal files and I will go over my responses, but anybody who watched that meeting knows that's, that's not what even happened. <clears throat> Number three, a couple days later, our mayor, well, he spelled it right that time. O U R hired one of Jeremy Hale's employees to work as our secretary in our office without a vote from the other members of the board with a lawsuit going on. So again, anybody who watched any of those videos knows that that's not the way that happened either. So that's the funny thing too, is all these meetings are on video for the whole world to see. And y'all have been watching, so you know exactly how it went down. So I find it funny that people are saying to the contrary when everybody knows that's not what happened. Number four, the next thing the mayor did was to the secretary out of her position. Again, I'm sorry for the bad writing, so we'll just have to try to fix that up. I believe he means the next thing the mayor did was to throw the secretary out of her position and made her into a helper and brought in another one of Jeremy Hale's workers to take over secretary job. I didn't even know we had a secretary. Interesting. I thought it was a clerk. Now we have two of Jeremy's, we have two of Jeremy's working in our office. We had two Jeremy's working in our office. I never saw Jeremy working in the office at all. Bad language once again. To do as they please with a lawsuit going on. And this stuff is on video to prove it. You're right. It's all on video. But apparently he never watched them. Or did he watch them through special goggles. I don't know. Because everybody saw what was going on. It's clearly in all the videos. So kind of strange or odd. I don't know what this special word we should use here is. Odd? Pretty fitting. Number five. A Jeremy Hales worker walked into the town hall recording himself. The only two people that were there where the mayor and the new secretary asked out loud for the keys to Jeremy schoolhouse office because he had work to do Ovi there. So they're running 
Mr. Hale's business out of town hall. Later in the video, they show the secretary on Jeremy's property and her saying she was there to take care of the Hale's ducks. So you know she works for him. Our mayor, A-R-E, guess they forgot already that it's O-U-R. Our mayor is just as in bold. She works on his property when he is in Ohio. This is unethical. I think it's pretty interesting people stating these things that are so untrue. Where they come up with these things is beyond me. It just... And this is why you have to have laughter. Because it's so ridiculous when you have people constantly trying to pull things out of the air, making up lies about you. It's just so far-fetched. If you let all this stuff bother you every day, you would need a lot of help. And I think after all this, I need some counseling. I mean, it's not been easy dealing with all this ridiculousness over what? I have no idea what the purpose of all this has been. Number six. The mayor has decided that she can run meeting on the phone with two other board members. So they come into the meeting and just vote. And the other two member have no clue what's going on. You don't say. She also degrades the other two board members trying to make them resign and accuses them of horrible things with no prof. This is on video. This is not the way a board meeting is to run. It is totally unethical. I think we should count how many sentences end with this is totally unethical. We could have a little game going on here. So it's, it's just, again, more interesting false sayings that people come up with. I just can't do much, but it's very laughable where he gets these things that I run meetings from a phone. I think one time they tried to call me when I was on a plane headed to Israel when they tried to have that meeting trying to not get me sworn in and they were playing games. I think that's the only time a phone was involved with a meeting and I was trying to get called on the phone, but any other meetings, nothing was ever run over a phone. So that's hilarious. Number seven, the mayor and the vice mayor and Jeremy Hales are trying to make Otter Creek unincorporated for their own benefits and profits. The mayor has a campground with her husband with lots of land and it will drop her taxes down dramatically. Also, with the new deals she's got going with the Hales and the vice mayor is building a campground as well. They don't care anything about Otter Creek or the people who live there. It's all about themselves. This is totally unethical. I don't know how many we are up to now. She even hints about it in a live meeting. Well, that's funny. Because that never happened. I don't know how I would profit from the town being unincorporated. Number eight. In the live video meeting, the mayor wears her campground t-shirt for advertisement for her business, which is not allowed. She also has a suggestion box in plain view at the meeting, which has the state seal on it, which is copyrighted by law and has to have written permission to use it. 
or it against the law and can only be used for one year. Well, I don't know of any time I was advertising for my campground using the town hall to advertise for my campground. Interesting. Now, the last one here is number nine. The board members voted to put locks on the fire hydrants so water wouldn't be stolen. The may without a vote remove the locks, which is against the rules. I guess that means the mayor, the may. Maybe that's cool hip language, the may. So she thinks she does not have to have the other members permission and re-vote on it. She doesn't get the concept. She's only the mayor by title to run the meeting and she's only one vote. More violations coming by others. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> he actually wrote that. More violations coming by others. And remember, Jeremy Hales is who had his YouTube fans tie up your phone lines with phony stuff. Dun, 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 dun. So, I couldn't believe when I received this in the mail. And for him to write all these false allegations and waste the time and energies of the state and the Florida Commission on Ethics time and monies is just ridiculous. And I don't know, again, why we're doing all this, but I'm pretty sure that Russell put him up to it. I'm pretty sure also that it was because he was upset that Lynette did not get voted in on the board, which again, I'm going to gather up all these screenshots that ties into the same time as when all this occurred to what he was posting all over the internet about myself and my husband. And it's just shocking to see the games they play and they want to cry that they're victims of Jeremy and all these other things when they are the ones who created this whole mess. They started posting all over online false things about everybody, trying to stir it up. They wanted themselves in the public eye. They wanted to receive donations and funding for themselves. If they had just gone about their lives and not done all these things with posting false information about everybody, there wouldn't be all these things going on that are going on now. So for the people that think that this is just wrong, how Jeremy's covering this story and all these things, well, maybe you should put yourself in our shoes where we had to live in a town with people doing these things to us and saying horrible things about us when all me and Brett ever did was to help John and Lynette. I helped her tremendously with printing things out I never asked for money for ink for my printer or for paper. I always stopped what I was doing to help them print different things out so their electric bill could get paid so that she could get funding from different agencies. I always tried to help. When John had a problem where he fell in the shed, me and Brett received a text message while we were in a Bible study and we left the Bible study to go help. So we go over to the property and Michelle hadn't even called an ambulance. You have somebody who has fallen onto the floor. They can't get up. 
and she calls us over there to see what we can do. I don't know why she hasn't called an ambulance. We go over there and John is lying on the shed floor. So I try to help pick him up. I get behind him to pick him up. He has urinated all over himself. It got all over me. We have her call the ambulance. We stay there until they come out and they had taken him away. And we miss the Bible study, most of it, trying to help them. And this is what I would have done for anybody. And what I got as a thank you for all of this after the fact is unbelievable. We go back to the Bible study. I had to sit away from everybody because now I'm covered in urine from trying to help him. And we finish the Bible study and she's texting again because there's a problem with the power and she can't figure it out. So again, we drop what we're doing and we go over there to help. And she sends me texts thanking me for coming over. You know, we saved John's life. The doctor said that he was septic and that if the ambulance hadn't been called, he would have died. And just to have done so much for them over the course that we did and to deal with the things we dealt with from them, nobody has been in our shoes and dealt with it. And it's easy for a bunch of people who have never lived in Otter Creek or had to personally deal with them to feel sorry for them because of the stories they use with their child that they adopted for people to feel sorry for them. It's easier for those people to do that because they don't know much of the story. They haven't seen how she's treated people or how he's treated people or what people have done for them and the way they got treated after nobody knows those things. And you just take this one little piece of the story and you feel bad because of this beautiful child and you're not getting the full story and you're not understanding that some people use certain things so that people feel bad for them. They can throw on these crocodile tears, but why hasn't she stopped the things she's doing to help herself and to help this child? She could have easily done those things and spent a lot less time and energy focusing on what should have been important to her. I mean, how can you even have a rescue group and all these animals if you don't have time for your child and their needs? Why would you have left a town that had all the things she needed to go to a town that has bad water, to live on a property that's full of garbage? glass, nails, unsafe. Why would you leave all that to go to that property if this child is so sick and needs special care and attention? Why wouldn't you take your time and energies to focus on her? And that's it. You're starting a rescue group and surrounding her by things that would make her sicker. I mean, me and Brett went over there several times to help move things with the tractor and help do stuff. Brett got a nail through his shoe. There was glass all over. I couldn't even imagine letting a little child run around that yard. I mean, a, an adult gets stuff through their shoes and it's harmful. I think it's great that the property is more clean now than it was then. So... Thank you to Jeremy and his videos that that helped out that situation, but it just doesn't seem like things are being done right and people aren't looking at the full picture of the situation. They're just getting this little piece and maybe it makes people feel better to donate money to someone so they think she's doing something good with this money. But that's another issue I have is people blindly throwing money at anybody do your research with that as well.
but a lot of people have been affected by John and Michelle. The people who live in the town in Otter, of Otter Creek have been affected by her ever since the day they rolled in there. And I will say they rolled in there like a storm because there's a lot of arguing and fighting and cussing and a lot goes on around them. And they're a lot to deal with. So you should really think of the other people when you make your conclusions. So, and I know I got a little bit more into the backstory of that. But that's the first part of this ethics complaint. I'm going to make another video and we'll talk about my responses to these nine allegations in this ethics complaint. And we'll let you know what happened. What did the ethics commission think? So stay tuned and I'll see you in part two.